Would you please pray with me? This day, Lord, you have provided for us relevance, reality, and rejoicing. This day, O Lord, you have affirmed our hope, and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Easter includes you. Easter includes you. Today I propose that each of us consider Easter not as a day, but as a as a paradigm, as a way of thinking and a way of living. More than just a singular day, but actually something that is applicable 24-7, 365. Okay? So that's where I'm coming from. And you can either choose to agree or you can say, oh, that's rubbish. Okay. I'm, for those, this is just a side note. For those of you that know my background, that I am by training a scientist and a mathematician, and on the basis of my scientific background and my mathematical knowledge and experience, I am an adamant, obsessed, firm believer in the resurrection. Okay. And I'm glad, be glad to sit down and talk with you about that some other time, but I'm not going to get into <laughs> mathematical treaties and things like that today. I just need to say that, that I'm coming from a place that I believe firmly in that Jesus got up from the grave and lives eternally. And that on that Easter Sunday, on that, on that day, Easter day, um, Jesus was saying to every one of us <coughs> and providing for every one of us a solid reference point for hope, okay, um, with all the mess and stress and turmoil and struggle that happens in our lives day in and day out, I mean all of us, I mean we have good days and we have bad days, we have horrific uh, challenges all the time and there are those that oftentimes despair. Despair is a, a, a regularly observed phenomenon in not only our lives, but in the lives of those we love, people around us. And the Easter message, the East, excuse me, the Easter way of thinking and being gives us a very real tool for dealing with the mess of every day. Okay? I believe and again, I, I preface it, I believe, David North, I believe that religion needs to be receivable and relevant. Receivable and relevant. If it's not relevant, then what we do on these Sundays is just smoke and mirrors. Right? Amen. Hmm? It's just going, it's just smoke and mirrors. If, if religion doesn't have something that is in it that is receivable and comprehensible and understandable, then it's not going to be doable. And it needs to also be relevant because I need to be able to use it day in and day out. It's, otherwise, why come to church? Why? I, I don't need to be. I got other places I could be. David and I could be out camping someplace. Amen. Huh? You know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know, you know. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, so, the, the paradigm, the way of thinking that Easter offers for us is uh, 
needs to it needs to be receivable and relevant. Um, I usually don't do this, but I need to read what is a part of what is in your program that you have. I, I because I wrote it and now I, I can't think of a way of saying it better than we So I need to the gospel proclamation has great audacity in not only its content, but also its context. The gospel message has at least two fundamental tenets. First, that we have direct access to our loving God, and second, that the grave is not the end. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he made the profound and provocative declaration that an intimate and unconditional relationship with God was available to everyone. In addition, as every generation grapples with death in all of its manifestations, grapples with death in all of its manifestations, Jesus' Easter victory provides boundless hope and encouragement. God's steadfast accessibility and the reality of eternal life are glad tidings to every human heart. This wonderful good news is made even more glorious in the very way it was initially proclaimed. And this is my, this is my point of emphasis. The historical and sociopolitical context of the first Easter was, was completely repressive in many aspects. Issues of race, nationality, economic status, and gender all had a very clear and indelible lines drawn that were not to be crossed. At a time and place in history when women were regarded as the lowest level of society, it was women who were the first evangelists, the first messengers of the good news of the Easter message. How ironic, how audacious, how marvelous our God is that the least, the last, would be the first recipients and believers and proclaimers of the best news the world has ever known. But we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised. Jesus was God made flesh. Imagine that which is infinite and all-powerful becoming one of us with our finiteness and weakness. That which is infinite and all-powerful which is our God, that is our faith, that is our hope, that is our trust. We trust that there is a God. And this all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful God said, I'm going to become like you because I need you to have hope when you're dealing with your daily messes. I need you to know that no matter how dark, how dire, how depressing, how despairing all your situations and scenarios are, you need to be able to get up, dust yourself off, and keep on stepping with your head up. You need to do that. That's what we, that's what makes religion receivable and relevant because we need that stuff every day. Every day. We get on our jobs and somebody gets all ugly in our face. We get it we 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 go to our our we dealing with family situations and, and all kinds of drama. And it's no wonder that a lot of people freak out and stress out. Huh? Anybody ever freaked out and stressed out? If you didn't raise your hand, you just lied. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, you, know you, didn't, I, you really didn't have to raise your hand. We already knew you was included. <laughs> because we all do. We all do. And so Jesus knew. The, in, the, the Almighty One knows all that we go through and says, I need you to have a relevant and receivable hope for the dealing of your days and nights and all the manifestations of death that you have to deal with. Because if I can live and walk with you 
and experience all that you experience and know all that you know and then die like all of us got to do and then overcome that we got a wonderful resource for hope the last thing that I, I, I need to emphasize an Easter person's <coughs> attitude is that there is every reason to be and stay hopeful in any and every <coughs> circumstance. An Easter person knows that every tomb has been broken. And there is nothing that can truly hold them back. So my invitation, my sisters and brothers, this is going to be a short sermon. My invitation today is a very, very simple one. I invite you to choose to be an Easter person. One who embraces and receives and accepts that we have through the resurrected Christ the means, the tools, the vehicles by which we can live every day with a realistic and relevant hope that whatever circumstances comes, whatever crap, well, excuse me, whatever troubles happen in our lives, I'm being, I'm being y'all, yeah. just, <laughs> oh, okay. When stuff goes down, which it will, huh? When things go wrong, when troubles happen, when difficult burdens come into our path, be an Easter person. Claim the hope and the reality of life beyond. What well, Ed said it last week. Ed, Ed last week in his in his uh, in his uh, testimony, he shared the twenty third Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley. So he, he just, you just said it last week. We say it again today in the Easter message. We affirm that we're just walking through this. We're walking through it. We're walking over it. You, you know, yeah. we're, we are overcomers. We are not victims. We are victors. It. it is your option. It is your prerogative. It is God's will for you. Easter includes you. Even better, Easter can be you. Would you pray? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this invitation, for this opportunity to live every day in a better frame of mind and spirit and heart. Help us say yes to that, to own it, to claim it, to want it and receive it, because you have made it available to us. It is here to be received. In each of our hearts, help us to say yes, to receive it and live it. Through Jesus, the Savior, the Christ, the Messiah, the risen one, we pray.